morning. Thank you guys all very much for coming to the uh, Blair Chamber of Commerce Candidates Forum. I appreciate you all coming out early this morning to uh, attend this. Um, a couple of uh, things we're gonna, I'm going to go over first. Uh, the most important thing for everyone, I think, is the bathrooms are directly through the door down the hallway. Coffee. Um, the ground rules here, what we're going to do is I'm going to ask questions to each of the two candidates. Um, each of the candidates is going to have, they're gonna, first off, they're going to get a five minute opening statement. Um, each will have five minutes. And then each of the questions, they will have um, three minutes to respond and then there will be a two minute rebuttal. Okay, we have a timekeeper in the front row who's going to be helping us with the time. Uh, Mr. Dennis Klimish, um, and we'll try and stay on schedule as much as possible. A couple things I'd like to ask, if you could all please turn your cell phones to vibrate or off, that would be much appreciated. Um, we could all be courteous of everyone here, regardless of which side you're in favor of, um, that would be appreciated. Um, so with all that being said, I'd like to uh, introduce Congressman George Miller. Candidate for uh, the congressional seat, uh, Rick Tubbs. Well, if everyone wasn't awake, they are now. So. Um, I'd like to start by uh, having Congressman Miller give the opening statement. Well, thank you very much, and thank you to the Vallejo Chamber for offering uh, Rick and myself this uh, forum to talk with our uh, constituents, and thank you for coming out so early in the morning to, uh, to be here. Uh, I've had a very special relationship with uh, Vallejo. Uh, much of it has been born with the struggles that this city has, uh, has gone through. Uh, the local issues that confront this city and other communities in my district and the people I represent is the reason that I fly home uh, from Washington almost every weekend. Uh, to meet with business leaders, to meet with my, to meet with, uh, my constituents, uh, to meet with uh, city organizations and, and others that are working hard uh, to uh, keep economic progress going in our, uh, in our communities. The fact is that when Vallejo or the citizens of Vallejo have needed me, I have been there. Uh, that's the way it has always been. It's the way it has been from the moment I started representing Vallejo. Uh, we'll all remember uh, that very early in that term was the, uh, was the BRAC Commission uh, to reduce uh, mil military facilities across the nation, and Vallejo was targeted and, and was reduced. We worked very hard to keep it open, and then we switched, when it wasn't kept open, uh, to economic conversion, economic development, to use it as an opportunity for this, uh, for this city. And we ended up having the fastest turnaround from government ownership to, to private ownership uh, of all of the bases that were closed in that, BRAC, uh, in that BRAC commission. We were able to work together with the Urban Land Institute to come in and interview citizens all across uh, the city about the future of Mare Island, uh, and we were successful in, in landing Lennar, and uh, we now see that we've brought uh, hundreds, of, uh, hundreds of families, hundreds of families to uh, Mare Island, some 90 businesses and 2,000 employees with the veter and the veterans clinics and the school facilities and Toro University, all of which speak to the future of this uh, of, of this community. And uh, uh, now we see that this, this last week, uh, the Marriott administration has put, a, put available two ships uh, that can be bid on by the DSR, the, uh, ADR, the company uh, that we've been working with to reopen the shipyard to dismantle the ships that are in the mothball fleet here in the, uh, in the bay, hopefully creating several hundred jobs on the Vallejo waterfront once again and a continuous stream of those ships. That was done when I pulled people together in my office on Mare Island to sit down and talk to all of the government agencies and said, here's the window of opportunity. We cannot lose it because of financial reasons, because, because of, of, of the dredging permits that we need to get. And the fact of the matter is that's now happening. That's in the work and we're keeping our fingers crossed that the financials will fall in place for the company and that work will, uh, uh, will begin. And uh, that's, that's, uh, my, my, that's how I work. I, I work with the communities. I work with the citizens involved. When this, when this community made a decision about its economic future, it wanted to be connected to the rest of the Bay Area. It wanted to be in the so-called inside ring of the Bay Area. When developers came to look at downtown, when the developers looked at the waterfront, they said, we need a transportation hub. We need a way so that people can live and work here and work in other parts of the Bay Area and make it simple. So we're modernizing the transportation 
transportation system. We've got dedicated ferries from, from Vallejo to San Francisco. And as you see, the, uh, the number of people who utilize that, who utilize the transportation hub uh, out of, uh, near uh, I-80. Uh, that's the future of the city. When we, when we talk to the developers, they say people want to be able to work and live here. They want to be able to walk to transportation, and uh, that's why they're willing to invest. That drives private investment. After a number of years with the Recovery Act and with additional federal resources, we started the Vallejo Station Project, which means that we'll now uh, take the cars on the waterfront, put them into a parking facility, and high-value land will be available for, uh, for economic opportunity. I've spent a long, uh, long relationship with Fighting Back, uh, one of the remarkable organizations that sprang up out of the Vallejo citizens to take care of its community, whether it's housing, whether it's crime, whether it's neighborhood cleanup. We participated, we cleaned up people's yards, we cleaned up people's houses together, we've rehabbed houses, we've moved new people in, we've given opportunities to neighborhoods to take control of the neighborhoods, to develop crime watch programs, and to, uh, uh, to be able to fight back, if you will, against the deterioration that can set in in a, uh, uh, in a neighborhood. So I've been very proud of that relationship. I've been very proud of our ability to work with the city and with the neighborhood organizations and with, uh, with community uh, organizations. But that's, again, uh, that's what I do. Those are my values. That's the hard work. That's why I get up every day and, and believe that I'm truly honored for being a member of Congress, that I have the ability to work with people to help to try and solve uh, their, uh, uh, their problems. And the fact of the matter is, it's the same values that I take when I'm working in Washington during the week and the Congress is in, uh, in session, uh, to try to help working families, to try to help communities. To, uh, to lower the cost of going to college, to pass landmark legislation to make college more affordable, to lower the interest rates on student loans, to increase the amount of Pell Grant so middle class families will be able to finance an education, uh, an education for, their parent, for, for, their, for their family and to, uh, to work hard to make sure that jobs are not continued to be subsidized to be shipped overseas. And I think I'm out of time. Thank you. Thank you.